Hi everyone and welcome back to the DeHart House. My name is Alicia. I'm your host of this crafty video podcast here on YouTube. <laughs> if you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I really appreciate you guys coming back and watching my videos and commenting and participating in knit alongs. It's so great. So it's been a little while since I recorded a regular episode. Uh, yeah, it's been busy, you guys. Really busy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, crafting still happened amidst all of that because it's a way that I unwind and de-stress, not just at the end of the day, <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, and so, yes, I have been making things and it brings me joy. So uh, I want to catch you folks up on things that I've had in progress maybe for a while and have have finished and um, I'd like to share with you a pattern release and that's the big thing for this episode. <laughs> so uh, to get us all caught up on things I finished before and uh, didn't get a chance to show you or has been uh, in the works for a while and I have not finished. So one of those things is my my very first weaving project. So I have a craft along video where I took you through that process uh, where it was my first time using a loom period, <laughs> let alone the one that I own. And I did warp it upside down and backwards and yikes. <laughs> so, uh, so I did take that project off the loom and here it is, my very first weaving project. <laughs> uh, and you know what? It turned out okay for a very first weaving project. Um, so this is 100% acrylic yarn. It's a like a DK weight, sport weight. Um, it's from, uh, this is Baby Bee Yarn from Hobby Lobby, and it's, I've got a, a, a light blue, a medium blue, white, and this variegated yellow and green, and they're just skeins that I had bought on sale at Hobby Lobby, and I thought the colors went well together, and I thought I'd attempt making a scarf, and... It is long enough to wrap around once, kind of. <laughs> so it's not quite as long as I would like for a scarf, but uh, yeah, so I did a, a fringe edge. That was fun. Just tied the warp ends. Uh, you can see I, I didn't weave everything in. <laughs> It was very fun. It was very fun to do the stripes. Uh, so I did some stripes in the warp going this way. And then I also put stripes in the weft weaving. And yeah, it was fun. Very fun. Uh, I do notice though there are some places where, yeah, I don't know what happened, but Here's a good example. Can you see that right there in the middle? There's two strands that are going, you know, they should be every other, but it's not the whole row that I messed up on. It's just right here. Um, oh yeah, here's, here's another case where that happened. You can see this here. So I wasn't always paying attention to the, the shed, right? When you move the heddle up and down and create that shed with the yarn, I wasn't always paying attention to the shuttle <laughs> or the, the stick. I need to look up all my vocab terms, this right here. Um, I wasn't always paying attention to it going properly through the shed, like under the strands it's supposed to go under, over the strands it's supposed to go over, sometimes it would catch. So, 
yeah um but uh oh yeah here's here's a good example too this one's super obvious <laughs> yeah uh, so it's not perfect but it's in my opinion really good for a first try um i did uh watch quite a few videos after doing this first project and they're videos i had watched before uh but after now like doing this my first time uh, some more things sunk in from those videos like oh that's what they're talking about when they say that um, so it's a learning process right it was lots of fun so I do have this finished off the loom this first scarf it's not amazing I have no idea what to do with it um, I'm not going to wear it but uh, yeah I don't know we'll see <laughs> but that's the that's the first thing um, so then while we're on the weaving track I did then decide okay now that I've learned from this process let's do another project and this time maybe I'll warp the loom correctly and yes I did warp the loom correctly this time I also did not try balancing it on moving boxes that was so helpful to just have it on the ground stable <laughs> um but uh this time instead of using uh sport weight acrylic yarn i used worsted weight cotton and i wove some towels so <laughs> i do have them all finished off the loom i did film some of this during vlogmas so at the beginning of vlogmas um i was weaving and this is what I was working on. I just recently finished this project, like last week. Excuse me. Earlier this week. Yeah, it was earlier this week. So I have a video um, recording of me finishing up these towels. And I'm going to put that in at the end of this episode. Uh, but I have four towels here. And uh, they're all, they're not all the same. Uh, but they are coordinating, <laughs> partially because they all have the same warp. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so green and gray and brown and white. And uh, I did a hem stitch this time and trimmed the ends really short. So uh, yeah, I have four new towels for my kitchen, which is really fun so I did pay more attention to the shed and making sure I was weaving it through properly uh, and I don't notice any any blips which is great um, I did have to really pay attention to the edge I feel like I had to pay attention more so with the cotton than I was having to with the acrylic not sure why or if I was just it's my second project so I was paying more attention uh, there was that um, but uh, yeah I, I'm really enjoying weaving so hello new craft <laughs> um, I did so if we go into knitting I did finish my headband that I was working on um, this green headband and I was knitting it to be a Christmas present and I didn't get it done in time so that's okay there's next year uh, this year <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah I just knit this out of scrap yarn leftover from from a sock actually sock project uh, my Canuck socks that I knit for my husband but yep so this is um, one of my new patterns this is the crisscross headband so the first one I knit was also out of leftovers from a sock project and uh, it's in the other room <laughs> that was with uh, self-striping yarn and then I wanted one that was more of a solid color uh, and then I went ahead and whipped up a third one 
uh, out of a nice bright color and uh, use it to make my tutorial video. So there is a uh, video that goes with the pattern uh, just because sometimes it's nice to see uh, what are the words I'm looking for? Pictures are still pictures, and when you're trying to describe a motion of movement, a, a video is really helpful. So, so a motion picture. Uh, but uh, yeah, so there's a tutorial video that goes along with this. And uh, yeah, so it's knit flat, and then you join it together using uh, Kitchener Stitch. Um, so it's knit this way, back and forth in rows, and then, you know, you join it around to make the headband. So, yeah, it's got this nice uh, crisscross detail here, and uh, it's just really comfy, cozy, covers my, covers my ears, which I need in the wintertime, uh, but uh, it doesn't, because the crisscross brings the fabric up, it doesn't crowd my my eyebrows, right? Uh, so it's just a nice, uh, really nice, simple headband, quick to knit up. Um, like I said, I made all three using leftovers from sock projects. Um, even this turquoise is leftover uh, from a project. So uh, you buy a full hundred gram a hundred gram skein of sock yarn. And I tend to use about 70 for a pair of socks, maybe around 60 for myself. And then I have leftovers, but not enough to make another pair of socks. Um, so it's, but it's enough to make a headband. So um, yeah, really simple, easy uh, pattern to make for yourself, uh, a good gift. And uh, my family members have been asking for uh, uh, ponytail hats with the, the hole in the top for your ponytail and so this also works I mean really great for that so um, so yeah that's my crisscross headband pattern which is available for free on Ravelry being released very soon if not already by the time this video is posted so that's finished um, I have some other patterns in the works, and I thought I'd just go ahead and share with you um, the socks because I, well, one of them I definitely finished last year before the end of 2020, uh, and that's this pair. Uh, and this is a pair of socks I knit for myself, and so this is a pattern that. I was meaning to publish, what, like a couple years ago, but then uh, we were moving. So I got a little bit too busy with moving from Texas to Washington. And then again, we moved from the place we were renting here to the place we purchased. So it's been busy. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I knit myself a pair. This is my um, going to be. A new sock pattern so I will talk about it more when I have that pattern to release but uh, yep I finished this pair in 2020 and they're ready to be worn <laughs> uh, it has a we've got some ribbing I love ribbing in socks so there's ribbing down the sides here and then there's this um, cabling detail down the middle, which is super fun. So I knit a pair um, out of this pattern for my, my husband has a pair and my dad has a pair and now I made one for myself. <laughs> and you know what? I think the pattern has been proofread now, you know, three times. So I think we're good to go on that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can finally take these off the blockers. Oh my gosh. Just leaving them sit on the blockers for a month. They are just so pristine. Love it. Uh, and then during 
yeah, during Vlogmas, I was trying to brainstorm another pattern. And so I finished that pair. Uh, it is out of a rather dark yarn. So I think I'm going to knit this again out of a lighter color. Um, but it's just a really simple texture pattern. And I'm still trying to come up with a name for it. This one, the, the pair I just showed you, I already have a name for it. Uh, but this one I don't. It's a really nice texture. texture. And with the blue, um, I was thinking something uh, watery, like a river. Um, actually, over Christmas, when we were taking family around driving and exploring, uh, we went over a river called Raging River. And I was kind of thinking of Raging River socks, um, especially with the blue. It's just really making me think river. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what it, it looks like on a lighter color as well, if it still screams Raging River, or if that's the the blue color that's speaking to me. Um, but uh, this pair I knit out of, this is Leading Men Fiber Arts in their uh, BFL yarn. And I don't remember the colorway because I um, balled up this skein and m intended to use it in a project right away and then changed my mind last minute, used a different yarn. Uh, so this has been balled up, and in the moves, I, I don't know where the tag is, probably in the trash now. So I don't remember the colorway, but it's uh, Leading Men Fiber Arts in their BFL um, fingering weight base. And the previous pair I showed you uh, here, this is in, oh gosh, I have the tag. The colorway is Vintage Photograph, and the dyer is, hang on, haha, -ha. the dyer is Lone Star Arts, and the colorway is Vintage Photograph. The base is called Armadillo. Super wash merino and nylon. I bought this at Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Fest, DFW Fiber Fest. You know, I haven't been to any fiber festivals since moving here to Washington. And I mean, you can all imagine why. Part at first, it was because, you know, starting a new job and that requires lots of time and then by the time I was ready to I had looked up a fleece and fiber festival that was going to be happening here in Washington state uh, but then the pandemic you know migrated here and um, it just had to cancel all kinds of events so I know they happen, and I know they'll happen again someday. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to attend any yet since moving here, so I'm still working through my DFW Fiber Festival stash, though, so no worries on that. <laughs> okay, and then um, I was getting a little socked out, to be honest, so... <laughs> I went to uh, I went to Joann's and uh, just needed to get out of the house and shop, you know, just looking at things. And it is hard to resist touching, but I'm getting better about not touching something unless I really intend to just take it home. Um, but I uh, went to, to look at what was on sale and what they had. Um, and so I did bring home some, um, this is Lion Brand Mandala. Um, so it's one of these um, big skeins that they call it a cake, 
right? And so you can see the, the self-striping uh, in the cake. And so this colorway is Centaur. Uh, and you can see the colors there. It's very um, nice muted colors, brown and, and uh, rust and like a golden color. I just think it looks really nice. And um, I, I like making baby blankets out of these. It's just so fun. Uh, and I, I thought it was really nice that this wasn't like a, in my mind, a typical baby color, right? Like it wasn't uh, a bright pink or a soft pink or a bright blue or a soft blue. Um, it's more of these muted, muted colors, but uh, I just thought, oh man, that would make a really just classy baby blanket. So I cast this on. Um, I needed something different. <laughs> Uh, so I, I have it folded in, in half here. So I cast on enough to make this um, 36 inches wide, so three feet, uh, because the intention is to give this uh, blanket to charity and it needs to be a certain size for that. So 36 inches is kind of the minimum. Uh, so I cast on enough to get, to get that. And I've just been working back and forth. So this is a, a pattern that I'm working on. Uh, and oh gosh, it just looks so nice now that it's got enough, uh, enough on there to really see it emerge. Yeah, it's, it's fun. So it has these, um, I'll try to get the curtain behind it there. So you can see it has these uh, eyelets in there. So, I was wanting something that would, I don't know, just a really simple repeat pattern. Uh, and I was going with eyelets on this one. I was also thinking about a texture stitch. Um, but I went with eyelets on this. I was going to throw in texture as well, and then I thought, that's too much. That's too much. Keep it simple. So, yeah. It looks really nice so it started at the the brown at the bottom it is wanting to curl so i will need to block this when i'm finished even though it's acrylic yarn the, the blocking does still help so it starts with the brown and goes into this rust and uh, tan and gold and then we've got um, more of a creamy tan color uh, and then this looks like a purple periwinkle purple color in the middle excuse me yeah but I think I think one skein is not gonna be enough <laughs> I was really hoping it would be but I think I need to go back to back to Joanne's today and get another one and hopefully it'll still be on sale <laughs> they were on sale uh, so I got I got one in this color I also got one in a uh, made me think of Valentine's Day because it's red, pink, and white. Um, I don't have it. Oh, yeah. Here it is. And, yeah, it's got a different... Look at this. This threw me off. The <laughs> labels are different. Um, so when I saw these sitting next to each other at the store... Uh, I thought it was a mistake. Like, this is clearly different, but it, it says Mandela, just cursive. Uh, so this is, oh, this is Cupid. Let's see, no wonder I thought of Valentine's Day. It's Cupid. So red and pink and white. And I, again, I thought baby blanket. And here's more of a quote, uh, in my mind, traditional baby color, that it's like pink right um but anyway so yeah i think i'm gonna have to go back and probably get either get another one in this color to go with it or like a coordinating one and same thing here with the centaur get either another centaur or 
uh, uh, color color scheme that goes with it. Yeah. Ooh, I just am having so much fun. So yeah, that's uh, mainly what I've been working on. I mean, I do have other projects on the go, but um, I will I will show you guys the big. Uh, crochet quilt that I'm working on. I'll show you that next time. I feel like I've I've got you caught up, which which we needed, so that's good. Uh, so I do want to talk about, uh, just remind you guys again about the pattern release. So the crisscross headband. Hard to see with the dark color here. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's garter stitch. It's a simple pattern that just looks classic and that's my favorite. <laughs> uh, so that's a free pattern. Also, I should have said at the beginning of the episode, uh, don't forget to knit my patterns, any of them, free, paid for, whatever, uh, and post your finished objects in the Ravelry group. So it's the D Hard House podcast group on Ravelry. Click join. And uh, if you knit any of my patterns, any of them, and I don't care when you started them, you could have started one three years ago. Uh, but if you finish it this month in January 2021, and you post that finished object over there in the thread for January, uh, I am giving away prizes. So every month this year, post your finished objects, things of mine that you have knit, any of my patterns. Uh, and if you finish it in that month, you post it in that month, and then you're eligible for prizes. So let me grab the prize. So this month for January, I'm giving away a one of my patterns. So you get to pick a pattern uh, to be gifted and a bag. So this is a drawstring bag with, so the, there's the drawstrings, but there are also handles, right? Uh, and this is a, um, a durable fab. This is like an outdoor fabric, like a canvas. So you can take this with you on a picnic and set it on the grass and your stuff is going to be fine. Um, it's not lined because I wanted to keep it light. Okay, really light. And so, um, yeah, I've made a few of these for myself and I, we put snacks in them. I mean, the snacks are in baggies, right? <laughs> but we put snacks in them and take them in the car and it's just super simple. So it's, I'd say it's a good size for uh, definitely a sock project or a crisscross headband. <laughs> uh, I'd say it's a bit too small for a baby blanket. Uh, but you know, you could put uh, a shawl project in here in its beginning state. Now, if it's a big shawl, like Find Your Fade by Andrea Mowry, maybe not. <laughs> but a smaller shawl, like a one skein boomerang, that would fit in here. Um, yeah, so it's a blue and tan uh, plaid pattern. And so this will be sent to the random winner that I'll choose uh, at the end of the month. So knit anything and everything and if you have something on the needles finish it because it doesn't matter when you started it and yeah every month i'll be doing that so every month there will be new prizes and if you want to donate to the podcast if you are a maker and you want to donate prizes uh please get in touch with me just send me an email or a message on ravelry and that would be amazing so, thank you everyone for watching. That's really all I have time to talk about today. <laughs> While it is Sunday, I have things I have to finish up before Monday, so I should get to that. Uh, so until next time, uh, be safe, be well, and enjoy your craft 
whatever it may be. See you next time. Take care. Bye. So I finished weaving some towels. Uh, I put this project on the loom in November of 2020 and uh, it's off the loom now. In fact, I have woven in all the ends. This has been washed and dried uh, and I've trimmed all the ends. So what I need to do now is uh, finish, uh, finish <laughs> basically. Uh, I need to cut apart the four towels and trim the, the ends here. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So the towels are completely finished. <laughs> I'm so excited to use them. Uh, so I did get four towels out of uh, this project and I use just plain cotton yarn. Um, this is, oh, I forget the brand name because I threw the tag away. <laughs> um, but just cotton yarn you can buy at Walmart, Joann's, any big box store. Um, for the non-white, the, the green and the gray, I did use some of my, um, some of my stash of peaches and cream. Uh, obviously not this color, but I did use pretty much all of those uh, balls in here. I don't have any left, um, but it's 100% cotton. It's uh, a worsted weight cotton yarn. And I wove this on my Becca loom with an eight dent heddle. Uh, and I'm really happy with what I've come up with. So the towels are, they're each different. <laughs> Um, partially because of the amount of yarn I had, I couldn't weave the same thing for each towel. So some of them are striped with colors, some of them are not. But what I did do is a hem stitch along each edge. 
and as you can see I did trim the ends to be pretty close to this hem stitch. I did not run this under the sewing machine at all um, because I want to see how these towels do without that. So these are my first towels that I've made on my loom and I want to run the experiment of seeing if the hem stitch is strong enough to hold these ends in or if I might have issues with that in the future where I feel like I should run it under the sewing machine just to secure those ends in. So I'm going to try this and we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I warped the loom using uh, white, gray, and there was this green, gray, and brown variegated. Um, so this direction is my uh, warp. And then the weft, uh, at least for this towel, I did uh, two stripes of white and two stripes of the gray and did that throughout. Let's see, this one. Oh yes, this was the first one. I just did all white for the weft. Um, completely white across there. This one, I wanted the body of the towel to have the variegated green, gray, and brown. Uh, so I initially put uh, an inch and a half here of white and then went as far as I could with the green, gray, and brown uh, and it didn't quite get me within an inch and a half, right? So there's a little more white on this end compared to this end simply because I ran out of yarn, but I think that's okay. It works out. And then this one, I did bring in a fourth color. So I used this light gray, uh, which I did not use in the warp. Uh, and so I did three across in the light gray and then one white and three light gray and one white uh, just to create a, a different look. And I, I have to say, I really like this one. Oh, I also put uh, a charcoal stripe on each end. I just think it looks it looks really nice. I think this is probably my favorite. So each towel is uh, roughly two feet in length and uh, what I did is while this was on my loom, <laughs> I see a dog hair already, <laughs> while this was on my loom uh, I would measure every six inches and I'd put a stitch marker on the edge and so while I was winding my work uh, you know, so I could continue weaving, uh, I'd move that marker every six inches. So I'd have to keep track of whether it was the first six inches, the second, the third, etc. cetera. Uh, but that way I could try to make the towels all the same length. And so that's how I kept track of length. I think I, I made the warp 10 feet long. So uh, if they're two feet each, right, that would have been enough for five towels, but there's always a bit of waste at the end. So I had um, two feet for each towel, that's eight feet, and then I needed space in between to do the waste yarn, space on both ends, because uh, you can't always weave all the way to the end, and it, it worked out great. Um, I didn't run out of room. I didn't have too much excess. I think that was the right amount of warp length to have, which is really nice. So these towels are going to go into my kitchen. They are going to be used to help dry dishes and whatnot. And we'll see how, how these ends fare with this hem stitch. So I will have a future video where I update you guys on how well this has held up in my kitchen and whether or not I think that was enough or if I should have reinforced it, we'll find out.